way here to the state tournament, it's the Kindred Vikings in as the number five seed in this tournament. We're gonna get to see the Aggies in white and the Kindred Vikings in blue to take on each other head to head. Let's start with the visitors on the scoreboard. The Kindred Vikings coached by Amanda Scheffler, originally from Moorhead, Minnesota. She started coaching her career in 2007 with the Moorhead Juniors program for eight years. Worked with the West Fargo Juniors program for a couple of years and then she started coaching JV at Kindred in 2014. She took over the program in 2015. This is her first coaching appearance at the state tournament outside of the gym. Amanda enjoys spending time with her husband, Brandon, and their three-month-old son, Bo. She's brought her team here. Uh, their motto has been FEAR, and that's not the fear that you think of when you think of fear. It's an acronym, and they use it to, to, to say rise above, basically. Rise up has been their motto here in the later part of the season. We'll talk more about that in the middle of the match. Their starting lineup goes like this. Michaela Renke, the senior, uh, libero will play back in the back row. Laura Beaver, a junior outside hitter. Victoria Broughton, a junior outside hitter and defensive specialist. Number five, Taylor, or six, Taylor Keller, a junior middle hitter. Madison Erickson is a senior outside hitter. And Brooke Hyatt rounds out your starting six as the senior setter. I apologize, Michaela Rinke is not the libero tonight. She will be playing outside hitter. No libero for the Vikings. Other side of the net, Park River, Fordville, Lincoln, Aggies. They're coached by Sherry Curry. She's in her eighth year as the head coach of the Aggies. She's a graduate of Park River High School. She received her bachelor's degree from the University of North Dakota where she played volleyball and threw javelin. She teaches phi ed and social studies at Park River Schools. Sherry has two daughters, Hannah and Elena. Sherry is married to Andrew Curry. The Aggies come in with a 23 and 11 record. Their starters look like this. Number one, Amy Syme, sophomore, uh, playing the back row. Josephine Marcuson, it's Josie as they call her. Bailey Beneta is the senior outside hitter. Elena Schwartz, excuse me, Swartz, no CH in there. Jenna Zavalny, Gretchen Brumman, and Taylor Dalby are your starters for the Aggies. Just about ready to get underway, Kindred as I said, we're the four seed in their Region 1 tournament. They came through. They beat Northern Cass 3-1. They beat Central Cass 3-1 and Oak Grove 3-1 to upset their way to victory and come here to the state tournament. They, uh, as I mentioned, have had the motto of FEAR on the year. It's F-E-A-R. It's, it's an acronym. It's not an actual uh, word that they use. It's F.E.A.R. It's face everything and rise. It turned into rise up and the coaching staff said that if you guys make it to state we'll get tattoos. So the tattoos went and came on this last week. There's four dots on the left wrist followed by an arrow. The dots standing for the acronym fear. The dots in the middle of the letters and then the rise above or rise up motto from the previous part of the year. That's why they turned it into an arrow. We're started here in Park River. We'll get the first swing at things. Kindred started off with the serve. And they we're underway at, against the double block. The Aggies in a bit of a scramble and they get the first point of the matchup. And Park River sideline is very excited about that. Elena Swartz with the first point of the match. She goes back to serve now. The junior outside hitter listed at 5-5. Jump serves and sends it deep, just out on that back line. A good job by the combo of Laura Beaver and Victoria Broughton to let that one go right between them, out of bounds on the back line. The junior middle hitter, Taylor Keller, to serve. Into the net and down. Park River gets their second point of the match. The Yaggies, as I mentioned, came in with a 23-11 record, a Region 2 champ. They defeated Finley, Sharon, Hope, and Page 3-1 in the Region 2 championship match. And they are in their 11th state appearance. Here's a swing from the near side, and Kindred takes a swing at that right pole. That's number eight, Madison Erickson, the senior. She's listed an outside hitter. She's made a change this year, and she's been able to place the ball rather than be super aggressive with swinging as hard as she can. She can place the ball in places where there are no players on the defense, and that's why she's playing that outside hitter role here. Another swing from her and another kill. Two for two for the senior Madison Erickson. Erickson leads 
the team in kills with 461 now after the two she just had there. She's also got 60 aces on the year and 529 digs as Park River pulls back even at three. Substitution coming for the Aggies. Number six, Maris Miller in there to serve. She's a defensive specialist listed at 5-4. Just a sophomore from the back line. She sends it on. Back set. Here's for Erickson again through the block. It's dug out by Miller. Now near side, a nice swing from Brumman. Net play taken and won by Jenny Zavalny. And this already is the most exciting match so far of the tournament that we've had on quarterfinal Thursday. We're getting to see two fan bases really get into it. Kindred obviously not too far from Fargo. They've brought a ton of fans here on the Class B side. And the Aggies return the favor and have brought plenty of their own on the far sideline. There's a swing from that left pole. Erickson another swing dug out in the back row by Sign. Swung on but long by Brummond. And it'll be 4-4. Kindred will take it. Senior Madison Erickson will serve. Tied up at four. Into the net. It's something that Kindred's going to have to fix. Service errors. If they want to continue their upset roll. They're going to have to serve a little bit better than that. Got to keep points out of the net. Make sure you don't give away those points with those service errors. Backside set taken but too long there for Laura Beaver the outside hitter as a junior service coming from the Aggies from Josephine Markison Josie got the serve off but the block was not in time for the Aggies Jenna Zavalny at the center there couldn't can't handle it and Kindred takes the point they're down by one 6-5 as Victoria Broughton checks in to serve Looking for a ball here on the far side. Broughton, the junior, will serve. Sent long, taken by Markison. Into the middle, Syme will take it from the back row. She just pushes it over. A set by Beaver to the near side. And down between the block is Michaela Rinke, the senior. Six all here for Kindred and Park River, Fordville, Lincoln. Service error again for Kindred, and they've given away three points already on their serves. Libero for the Aggies, Amy Syme back to serve. A little jump serve over the net will go. Received by Broughton. Into the middle for Erickson, blocked off. Kept alive by Kindred, more net play. Dug out by Erickson. And taken, it's sent deep, dug up by Markison. Syme, Markison again over the net. Keller in the middle. She'll take a swing at it over the block, and then it's set in the center of the tall middle blocker. Taylor Dalby getting in the mix of things, getting those big hands up above that net. She stands at six foot, and that height advantage is something that Kindred will have to deal with all night. Syme puts it over the net as a sophomore. There's an ace for Amy Syme. Her five, or excuse me, I was going to say her 500th ace, and that's not true. She's got 519 digs on the season. Syme sending it on. Deep serve taken by Broughton. It comes to the near side, pushed over by Rinky. Into the middle for the middle blocker, Dalby. And then they go outside again, as the Aggies do, down line. Set up by Beaver. Into the middle of miscommunication. Rinky does push it over, though. They go short middle, set off the double block, and it's blocked away by Kindred. The combo of Taylor Kelly, Taylor Keller and Michaela Rinke, rather, blocks that one down, and no chance for Taylor Dalby. She couldn't have hit it through that block either. She took a hard swing, and it's still blocked off. Into the middle again for Dalby. This time it's off the top of that block. Goes outside. Rinke takes it, and the libero can't quite handle it. Syme passed it into the net, into the bench rather, and Park River still up by one, nine to eight, but Kindred not going away easily. This one could turn into a pretty good match here in the quarterfinals. Beaver serves, set up by Dalby to the back row for Markison. Into the center, Hyatt, comes near side for Rinky, blocked off, and they can't keep it. 
blocked away by Jenna Zavalny, but nobody there for Kinder to cover the tip or the block. And the Aggies out in front, 10 to eight. Kindred will set up the offense near side Rinky. She puts it over. Rinky will keep it up. Set up by Hyatt and then bumped over by Beaver. The Aggies push it back to the near side. Set up on the left for Beneta. And that's down and in. Another kill for Rinky. That's her third on the match already. 10-9. Rinky will now go back to serve from the back row. The senior outside hitter. Mentioned she made the transition. She was played libero. Has very good court vision. She's exceptional defensively, but they kind of moved her and said, hey, we need you to be an outside hitter for the regional. She was able to do just that, and then you're seeing her have some success on offense here as well in their state tournament debut for 2016. Pushed over by Keller. Now here are the Aggies near side. Through the block, but dug up by Beaver. Aggies back to the left pole. A swing, and it makes its way through the block by Hannah Gordon, the sophomore outside hitter. And the Aggies honestly don't look as sharp as Kindred right now, but they're still out in front, 12 to 9. Which goes to show you the kind of resiliency this team might have. Outside, just by a touch. A good swing by Madison Erickson. But she made it. Just out of bounds, and it's 13-9, and Coach Amanda Scheffler wants a timeout to talk about her team. Kind of back them off a little bit. They look like they're getting a little bit of nerves here. So she's going to call a timeout, have them breathe a little bit, and just take some time to settle themselves back down. Today's game is available for all our subscribers via our mobile website. You can log on to nfhsnetwork.com from your smartphone or tablet and view live games or replays from anywhere. High school sports fans, never miss another game. You can become a subscriber to get access to that mobile website on nfhsnetwork.com to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, nfhsnetwork.com. High school happens here. The Kindred Vikings, 24-18 record coming into the state tournament. They're Region 1 champions. They defeated Oak Grove 3-1 in their championship match. It's just their second tournament appearance in program history as they get another point out of the timeout there. It's now 10 points for Kindred, 13 for Park River. The Vikings did win the 2012 Class B state championship in their only other appearance here. Set up by Zavalny near side to Dalby. Now Kindred sets it up. Pushed over by Madison Erickson. And we got a whistle. Net violation on the Vikings. We'll pull it 14 to 10 now. Park River on top. 16, Taylor Dalby, the senior middle blocker. Six foot to serve. She'll play the back row for this possession. Sent through the block and kept alive by Brumman. Now Kindred has another chance at it. And just pushed over by Erickson. Now swing taken by Hyatt. Back and forth we go, pushed by the Aggies, Elena Swartz. This is Beneta, back into the middle. Just a tap over the net, and into the net again is number eight, Madison Erickson. Three seniors on the team, four kindred. Michaela Rinke, Madison Erickson, and Brooke Hyatt on the Aggies side, we got seniors in Bailey Beneta, Jenna Zavalny, and Taylor Dalby. Three apiece for these two teams. Sent down with authority there for the Vikings. Michaela Heinrich, sophomore middle hitter, took the short set. It's a pretty easy one to put home from Brooke Hyatt when she serves you up with timing like that. No chance for the defense to get set up with that short of a set. Near side, Aggies take it, a block by Kindred. Madison Erickson, this team thrives on emotion, on momentum. They've been riding that emotion here through the latter part of the season, through their regional tournament. And they find them here at State, and the momentum is continuing. They're still down by three, though, here in their quarterfinal matchup. Right pole swing by Beaver is dug out. Now near side, 
go the Aggies to Beneda. It was blocked off, pushed over by Brumman. Taken by Erickson. The Aggies continue to go back and forth. Amy Syme content with just pushing it over and waiting to see an attack. Blocked by the Aggies, but a net violation on number 15. They're going to say Gretchen Brumman. I think they could have gotten either Brumman or Benetta on that. I think both of them were in the net, but they just happened to choose Gretchen Brumman, the middle blocker. Benetta sets up in the middle, pushed over by Zavalny. Kindred now sets up their offense, come near side, and a swing and a kill by Madison Erickson. Another one for her, and Kindred forces the Aggies to call a timeout. Sherry Curry wants to talk things over with her Aggies squad. And the Region 2 champs taking on the Region 1 champs, and right now Kindred out of their timeout looking pretty good as they close the gap to one. It's still 15-14, Aggies on top. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the rest of set number one right after this. This game is brought to you by Under Armour, maker of the world's best apparel, footwear, and accessories. Check out the full line of performance gear now at UA.com. Under Armour, I will. Back here at the Fargo Dome, 15-14. Park River, Fordville, Lankin on top of the Kindred Vikings. Kindred with a little bit of a run leading up to that timeout. By Coach Sherry Curry of the Aggies. They go to the middle here. Out of timeout, blocked off by Kindred. They're just tenacious on this. You can tell they're moving just that much quicker based on the emotion here and then can't handle that one and it ends up as an Aggies point in the serve will be Maris Miller sophomore defensive specialist out there Kindred will receive Hyatt sets up on the near side for Beaver and Kindred gets it to knock down off the block back and forth we go two teams we knew this was probably going to be the closest match of the class B quarterfinals I don't know that we knew it was going to be this close. But Kindred has been riding this high for a long time, and they just hope it doesn't quit. Michaela Rinke with a block there. And here they go, Madison Erickson back to serve. Taken by the Aggies, Hyatt, or excuse me, Zavlotny sets up for Dalby, who hits it way long on that one. And Kindred now leads it 17-16. Their first outright lead of the match. Just out of play, and again, a service error by Kindred. Gives Park River back the ball and service here, tied at 17. Josephine Markison back to serve. The junior, Josie, takes it and takes an ace at that. Another service, Erickson takes it. It's set up by Hyatt to the near side to Rinky. Dig out by Syme, set up Zavlotny to the far side. Swartz took that one, and here's a little tap from Beaver on the back side. Swung and the kill for number 10, Elena Swartz. Comes off the wrist in that back row of Taylor Keller, and she just can't keep up with it. That goes the service to the Aggies. 19-17 right now. A big swing and a kill from Michaela Renke. The senior continues to shine and step up in the moments when she's needed most. As a substitute comes back in to serve will be Victoria Broughton. She'll be back, three Aggies set to receive. Serve received goes to the Libero sign. Swung on through the blockers, and that's another kill. It's probably three in the last five points for Elena Swartz. Swartz. 
Swartz with 135 kills coming into the match today on the season. And Kindred can't handle the service. Amy Syme. And a timeout called by Amanda Sheff where Amy Syme with another ace. That's her second one so far today. It's 21-18, Park River, Fordville, Lincoln on top of Kindred right now. Kindred hanging tough, though, as the five seed. Like I mentioned, they won their regional tournament as a four seed coming out of Region 1. On the other side, Region 2, the, uh, the tournament went like this. Park River beat North Border 3-0. Then they beat DVE 3-1. And Finley, Sharon, Hope, Page 3-1 to come lead by example type of group and when I'm talking about this I mean Bailey Bonetta, Jenna Zavalny and Taylor Dalby not very vocal leaders but if not one needs to step up it would be Dalby almost all the time in the middle a couple of swings and the second times the charm there for Dalby and Taylor Dalby is getting pumped up there's been a couple collective mental uh, games where you've seen sort of the whole Aggies team this season really struggle in the mental game to get out of a hole or dig out of a hole so far they look strong today and they look like they could give it a little more even they almost don't look like they're up to their full potential yet but both teams here playing very good volleyball and that's evident there on the net play dug out by Syme and Kindred will get a free possession a back set quickly to Markison off the block and down Kindred with a point out of the timeout, 22-19. The Aggies still on top by three. But this is the closest set we've seen of any so far here at the state tournament on the Class B side. Outside set up for Swartz. Pushed by Ranky. It's back and forth. A little calmer. Here's Rinky again. Tries to go over a block, but it, the block never comes. And there's a short set in the middle for Dalby. And that's going to be an illegal touch on Taylor Dalby. 22-20. Number four, Laura Beaver. To serve. Serve received by Markison. Outside. Take a swing and through the double block is Elena Swartz. Another kill for her. That's four in about the past 10 points. Service from Zavalny, taken by Kindred. They'll try to go over quickly on two, and Brooke Hyatt just, just a touch too low. It's set point for the Aggies. Zavalny will serve it for set point and set number one here at the quarterfinals, the last match of the night for Class B and Kindred stays alive. Michaela Renke, the senior, puts it down in a spot where nobody was for Park River. Defense was a little slow on rotation and didn't expect it to happen that quickly. Here's Renke for the serve. Syme receives. Syme from the back row will take a hit. Renke receives it. Hyatt to the near side. That's a swing from Erickson. And Zavalny puts it up. Blocked off and Park River, Fordville, Lankin takes set number one, 25-21. This one is going to be a good one, folks. Stay tuned for the rest of this. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with set number two right here on the NFHS Network right after this. Welcome back inside the Fargo Dome. About 20 after 8 here in the northeast corner. The Class B side for the 2016 North Dakota High School Activities Association Volleyball State Tournament. These two teams, we knew it was going to be the closest match of the day, I think, coming in between Park River and Kindred. We knew Kindred 
coming in just riding an emotional high. They are on a roll, probably the hottest team in the state right now uh, when you consider the fact that Langdon and our Redeemers have been winning all year. Uh, a winning streak isn't as big of a deal. This Kindred team has been winning. Uh, they won six in a row so far, looking today for their seventh, but they dig themselves a little bit of a hole. A couple service errors in that first set really kind of hurt them. They ended up losing. They had five service errors in there, and they lost the set by four points. Something to keep an eye on here as the match progresses. Park River, on the other hand, Coach Sherry Curry's team looked really good. Their seniors started to kind of step up there later in the set when they knew they needed a push to get to the end. Sherry Curry talked a little bit about her athletes today. She said, I love the fact that we get in Class B so many multi-sport athletes. You don't see specialization. Now, does that mean that maybe there's some footwork or some mechanic things that could be fixed? Yeah, but multi-sport athletes really have just a determination to be good. They get they get a lot of different looks throughout the year. All the coaches are kind of arguing over their time, but you get to see the determination and the grit that they have. They've learned it from other sports. They're athletes first and volleyball players second. And sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, you get maybe lose some of the mechanics and the things that uh, don't work and they can make things work, especially defensively when you may not think they can get to that ball, but because they've been trained in basketball or softball, they may be able to get a hand on that ball and keep a play alive. Here's a swing for Kindred, and we have a point going for Park River. They're going to call it four touches on Kindred. I'm not completely sure. It looked like a block on the far side, but off the tape it is, and then Park River just gives it right back to Kindred with a service error, serving now for the... Vikings will be Taylor Keller, Jr., standing at five foot ten on the near side, and miscommunication in that back row on the defensive side for Curry's team. Both Syme and Swartz went for that one, and a serve right into the net for the Kindred Vikings. So a couple of service errors here early in set number two for both teams. Forces us into a 2-2 tie. Elena Swartz from the far side, another service error. That's three of the five points so far in this mat matchup here in set number two. Again, the Aggies lead at one set to none. And in large part, I believe, to some of the service errors by the Vikings. If they can clean some of that up, they have a chance at moving forward. Set up outside. Pushed over a little bit by Madison Erickson, then pushed over again by the Aggies. Kept alive, Rinky keeps it, and then they just can't quite get it over the net. Brooke Hyatt was trying with all her might here in the near corner, but just didn't quite make it. Service from the Aggies, Rinky takes it. Hyatt keeps it out of the press table, and Erickson takes a swing and paints the corner back there on the line. Kindred up four to three now. Madison Erickson to serve. Just off the top and it's a let serve and an ace for the Vikings. Erickson will go again. Erickson with her 61st ace of the season. Here's Rinky from the left pin. Hyatt sets up in the middle, a nice little push over by Heinrich. And then the Aggies take it back, a swing by Gordon, puts it down, and it ends up as an Aggie point. Substitute coming in, number six, Maris Miller to serve. Taking a seat is number seven, seven, Bailey Bonetta. Short set in the middle and a firing Short middle hit. Michaela Heinrich again. Hyatt, they have something going there. It looks like the Aggies struggle a little bit defensively, especially on serve receive, getting into that defensive spot to put up a double block on that short middle set. Syme was there, just couldn't get a good enough pass off to her setter. Another service error for Kindred.
three of the five points for the Aggies so far in this set have been kindred service errors. Aggies keep it alive, Syme, and then pushed over by Zavalny. Short set in the middle. This time it was for Taylor Keller, and she missed just wide right. 6-6 six, six now in set number two. The Kindred fans on their feet, filling up the bottom section of this Fargo Dome on the near side. A couple of quick touches. Rinky fires over the double block. Zavalny will come to the near side. A swing taken by Swartz. Now a swing for Kindred taken by Beaver. Swartz again. And I think we have a violation. It's going to be against number four for Kindred, Laura Beaver. And there you see some of the aggressive serving that the Aggies can do. Marcus in with an ace. Another ace on the year for her. They played pretty well in aces, 165 so far this season. Coming into today's match. And the Aggies up by two here in set number two. Hyatt will set near side. Taken by Beaver down and in for a point. Easily done by Laura Beaver, the junior hitter, and she will now go back to serve. As the Aggies set up their serve receive. 8-7, Park River. And the serve receive just doesn't quite work. Just a bad pass there from Maris Miller. She's saying, my bad, my bad. She'll go back to the spot and try it again. Another serve will come for Beaver. That's another ace for her on the season as well. Zavalny pushes. That is absolutely brilliant from that middle spot. You can tell Kindred knows but that might be a weakness of the Aggies. They've been hitting that short middle set quite a bit. They run a fake to the left pin and they just run that short middle set. This time the beneficiary was Taylor Keller. Near side Swartz just missed that back line. And it's 10-8 Kindred. And a timeout taken by Sherry Curry in her eighth season as coach of the Aggies. She's going to take just a second, calm her team down a little bit. She, uh, she talked a little bit about her team, and she said when they really knew what they could accomplish this season was at the Deluxe Burlington Tournament. Uh, they made it in the championship bracket. Uh, they went up against our Redeemers, North Star, and Langdon. They didn't win, but she said when we, when we saw how we played against those teams, we knew we had a shot at a couple things. You, they lost to our Redeemers 2-0 in that one. They lost to North Star 3-0. And they lost to Langdon, or excuse me, they lost to North Star 2-0 and they lost to Langdon 2-0 in that tournament. They also lost to North Star early in the year 3-0. They lost to Lamore 1-1 to earlier in the year as well. As they come back for serve receive, down by two. Swartz on the near side just pushes. Hyatt goes far side for Rinky. And some slow offense here from both teams. Down the line and in. Nice job by Gretchen Brumman to just patiently hit that over the block and down line. Say it all the time, a, a kill does not need to be hard and fast. You can just simply find a spot that's open on the floor and court vision is so key when that defense is around and there's one of the reasons that Michaela Renke is not in the libero uniform tonight that court vision has really proved beneficial over the last couple of matches for them being able to be on offense be aggressive and see the floor like she does gives them a really good chance on offense into the middle just too too much of a set up in front of Taylor Dalby, Hyatt, or excuse me, Zavalny put that one just out of reach on that middle short set, 12-9 Kindred. Syme can't get in there, and it's an ace for the Vikings, and the momentum starting to swing 
the way of the blue. Michaela Renke back for another serve. The senior sends one on the way. Zavalny sets up near side. Swartz blocked away. Pushed over by Zavalny, and Zavalny got hit in the mouth there. She looks to be okay. Zavalny short set in the middle, taken by Dalby. Kindred will point it up, and Hyatt pushes it over. Swartz near side, just tipped it right outside the pole, and the Aggies try to shake it off really quickly. Coach Sherry Curry kind of letting her team play a little bit here. She just took a timeout not too long ago, 14-9. Is your score, center set kill for Taylor Dalby. Beautiful little play there, run to kind of get your momentum back, get your feet back under you, and get the rotation to move ahead. Bailey Bonetta. The senior outside hitter comes back in. She'll play on the near side. Excuse me, on the far side. She'll be the right pin hitter. Here's a set for her. Just kind of taps it over the block. Rinky takes it. Outside, Erickson off the double block, and it's a nice job by the double block. Good timing by Beneta and Zavalny on that one. Check that, not Zavalny, Dolby. Dolby was up on that block. Back set. Keller just kind of pushed it over. Here's near side for Swartz, and she knocks it down with another kill for her. And Park River making a bit of a comeback here over a couple points spread. 14-12, Kindred still on top. Renke takes it. Hyatt sets it outside for Erickson. Blocked off, dive, a double block too far in front of Victoria Broughton. And there the Kindred Vikings were a little antsy. They, they didn't stay in the rotation and just hesitate that half a step before the block before they move to their rotation. Live ball rotation. And that's just a communication thing. Didn't expect to get blocked like that, but when you have the six foot Taylor Dalby on the other side of the net, you gotta expect some sort of blocks at some point. Erickson takes a swing, pushed over and taken for a kill. They'll take it, Bailey Bonetta. Pushes it over. We're tied at 14 here in set number two. Erickson swings around the double block. A nice dig, but not a good enough pass. Great job to at least be there by Markison, but it wasn't enough to keep the Aggies in the point. 15-14 Vikings. Just touched by Erickson on the net play. Not much you can do there. Some of the passing here for Park, Park River, Fordville, Lankin. Just to kind of shore up a little bit. Pushed over and it's down for a kill by the setter. No, they're gonna, they are gonna give the point to Kindred as a matter of fact. They're gonna call it was an over the net play. They are going to give the ball over to Kindred. And we're going to get a, just a confirmation here. Kind of waiting to see what exactly happened. So the point will go to Kindred on an illegal net play. No rotation happens for the Aggies. The Vikings will have the serve. The 17-14 after that. Bit of miscommunication there. And Coach Amanda Scheffler talking to the referee at the table. Just wanting to make sure that they have the correct score on that. Just wanted to make sure they were in the correct rotation as well after the illegal net play. Keller to serve, and we are back underway. Syme takes it, and then Zavalny pushes it back and gives it up for Beneta. Here's Erickson from the Vikings. Zavalny outside, Swartz takes a swing at it, dug up. Comes outside, Erickson takes it. She tries to go down line off the blockers and the Aggies stay alive. Kindred in a bit of a scramble, Erickson will just push it. Dug up by Swartz, net play taken and Erickson wins the net play. Erickson, five foot eight, had a little bit of a height advantage. Against the counterpart across the net, Swartz. Uh, check that, across the net was Beneta. Erickson just pushed it over. 
Zavalny sets it back for Bonita. Just over the block, taken by Keller. Kindred stays alive. Erickson will take a swing around the double block. Dug up nicely by the Aggies. Now Hyatt takes a right-handed swing. Here's Zavalny into the middle. Dalby stuffed it down the throat of Kindred, trying to stay alive. They keep it up. Aggies have to scramble back into offense. They'll try it again. Just long on the outside, and the Kindred Vikings stay alive in the point. A good scramble on defense, and they're up by five here in set number two. Timeout called. Sherry Curry, she realizes the crowd is on the side of Kindred after a couple of bad breaks, after a couple of mistakes. Now the Kindred Vikings have a chance to pull even at one set apiece. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a second with the remainder of your set number two right here on the NFHS Network. This game is brought to you by Under Armour, maker of the world's best apparel, footwear, and accessories. Check out the full line of performance gear now at UA.com. Under Armour, I will. Kindred goes up by five here at the Northeast Court at the Fargo Dome. Bit of a different setup than those of you NDSU football fans watching in the Fargo Dome. They pull the south end bleachers all the way up toward the north end, and you're looking for at basically the end zone in the north end of the dome right here where the volleyball courts are set up. Kindred comes out of the timeout with a block. 20 to 14. The Vikings on top. The Aggies, a lot of them looking to the bench. Syme takes it. Zavalny near side. Beneda takes a swing at it. Here's Erickson with a small little push. Zavalny into the middle for Dalby. She just tips it over the blockers. And Kindred can't handle that little tip. The pass coming from Laura Beaver wasn't up in the air quite high enough to stay alive. 15 to 20. The Aggies. Still trail by five. They're going to go back. Swartz will go back. She has 388 digs on the season. Second on the team, Swartz does. And here in the middle for Dolby. And Kayla Rinke can't quite make it to that one. And it'll end up being an Aggies point. So the Park River, Fordville, Lankin, Aggies come out of the timeout. They lose a point, but come back with two straight after that to pull within four. Hyatt trying to back tap it over the net, and she does, and we're going to have an illegal touch on the Aggies. That'll go against number 18, Hannah Gordon. 21-16. Kindred with the serve now. Number 12, Brooke Hyatt will serve. Syme is the serve receiver. Zavalny goes backside for Dolby. Down line and in. 21-17. Taylor Dolby now goes back to serve. She'll play the back row, but just for that point, and that won't be any point as she serves it long and gives Kinder their 22nd point of the second set. Coming back, Erickson will serve. Serve received, taken. Zavalny sets it up right on top of the net. Pineda had to kind of push it over Funky, and they go around the block now. Kindred back to try and receive this. They dig it up. Hyatt goes back set again, this time for Beaver. Zavalny back set for Beneta, trying to go over the double block, and she does. Hyatt to the left pin here for Rinky, and it's down and in for the kill. Michaela Rinky looking good from the left pin. We've seen Kindred, they started off the set with three service errors. In the first five points that the Aggies had, three of them were from Kindred, giving them points away. And they've shored that up here in the latter part of the set. Just out of bounds, and it's set point Vikings. 24-17. The senior Madison Erickson will serve for the set. Pushed over by Swartz. Taken. Outside, Renke just taps it right over the top, and there it is. We're tied at a set apiece. The Kindred Vikings win their first set at the state tournament since 2012 when they won it all. 
Haven't been here since, and they show up. Couldn't quite get the first set, but 25-21 goes the way of the Aggies in the first set, and then 25-17 here in set number two toward the Vikings. We're tied to this set apiece here on the NFHS Network. We'll be back in just a second with set number three. Chicago Dome in the North East, northeast corner for the Class B quarterfinal. The final matchup of the night between Park River Fordville Lankin, who's taking the entire set break here. Coach Sherry Curry really getting uh, not a lecture, but a discussion in with her team as Kindred is out on the floor already, ready to begin set number three. We're tied at a set apiece. The winner of this matchup will go up against our Redeemers tomorrow at 8 p.m. Our Redeemers took care of Ray in three quick sets at the six o'clock game. Earlier today in the top half of the bracket, Langdon area Edmore Munich took down center Stanton by a score of three to nothing. Lamore also beat Hazen by a score of three to nothing. You can see why I said this was probably gonna be the closest matchup of the day. The one, two, and three seeds easily went on with 3-0 victories. And here we have the four versus the five, and it's really been pretty even for both sets right here with a 25-21 score to begin toward the Aggies, and then a 25-17 score toward Kindred. Dalby with a tough hit over the top. Here's Kindred again with a swing. Dalby kind of rinky serves. Dalby in the center, and that's a bad touch by the setter, Gen Jenna Zavalny. Rinky's serve is received. It goes back into the center for Taylor Dalby. She takes it. Aggies setting up offense here. Kindred looks a little more out of sorts, but they're getting the points. The Aggies are getting the quality looks that they want, I think. They're before the block in a lot of situations. They just can't catch the, catch the inside of the paint. Pushed over by Swartz. Outside it comes for Erickson. It's short tap, and Swartz can't dig it out. Kindred out on top right away, 4-0. And here's Coach Curry again, just, hey, let's stop this right away. This, Kindred team has been so momentum driven over the past couple weeks that it's it's really been impressive. The, the crowd has been behind them. They've played exceptional volleyball all behind the emotions of their players. They're really getting into the matches. You can see they're visibly amped up about these matches. And Coach Amanda Scheffler doesn't, she doesn't have to do a whole lot of motivation for these uh these players, the three seniors do plenty of that. They're very vocal on the floor, very loud, amped up. They continue to kind of explain what needs to be done and they see it and they do it, it looks like, from up atop this northeast corner. Renke will serve for the Vikings. Dalby in the middle around a blocker and down again. Both teams look like they're trying to exploit maybe, I don't want to say a weakness, but an area of the floor, and it's really that middle set. Neither team has had a ton of success from a left pin or the right pin. A lot of the success for either team, offensively anyway, has come by playing solid defense and getting those short middle sets. Both teams are having success with it. We'll see if that continues or if one of the coaches can kind of shore that up. There is a left pin hit from Erickson. We haven't seen any of that really since the first set. And Madison Erickson, the senior, takes it. It's 5-1 Vikings. After the first set, really, they were struggling to kind of hang on and hang close. They've looked really good here in sets two and even the beginning of set three. Middle set pushed over by Heinrich. And now Kindred takes it back. Heinrich fakes it again. Here's Erickson from the far side, blocked off. Couple of players in on that. Schwartz, I believe, was the main blocker. Dolby back to serve. Set over and let serve, kept alive. Dolby with a pass up to the front row and kept alive and pushed over. Hannah Gordon just kind of stuck her hand out there and it ended up going over. It seems that the Aggies almost do better when they're out of system right now. They're, they're playing better in the scrappy moments than they are when they try to set up their offense, which is 
a different sort of look for the Aggies team as they miscommunicate on that and Dolby has to take a seat. Syme comes in for the defense there and as Dolby had to serve as that middle blocker rotating the back row, that's maybe a ball that Syme could have got to, but just because Dolby was in there, she couldn't quite make it. Kindred gets the point on that one. Six to four, the Vikings up. Aggies kind of clawing their way back into it, though. After a couple quick points, they serve here for Miller. Hyatt takes it and back serve for Erickson. A huge swing. It's dug out easily by Miller, though. Made it look almost like nothing. And then a quick point for the Aggies after the dig. Six five. Kindred still on top. Trying to hang on to that lead that was once four points. And the Aggies can't control that one. It's out of play. 7-5 now. The Vikings on top. They get to serve back. And Madison Erickson will take things over from that back line. I believe we've got a net violation. He's on number four for Kindred, Laura Beaver. Substitute coming for the Aggies. Coming in to serve will be number four, Josephine Markin. Markison, the junior outside hitter and defensive specialist today. Short in the middle, but hit right into the net there by number 10, Michaela Heinrich. The set was, it looked like she really had to reach to get a good contact on that ball, and it ended up in the middle of the net there. And there's a service error for the Aggies, giving the point and the lead right back to Kindred. These two teams, it's a game of runs and a game of momentum, but right now they're really fighting over that momentum to try and see who can take it. And then they just give it right away like that. Another service error. This time for Kindred, and it's tied at eight. Amy Syme will serve. Hyatt keeps it. Blocked away by Dalby and Swartz. Syme back to serve with Park River's first lead of the third set. Nine to eight here. Syme service, deep serve is taken. Hyatt goes near side, taken by Rinky. And it's right up on top of the net, and it ends up as a kindred point, just a heads-up play by Taylor Keller to jump and attack that ball rather than go up with her two hands to try and fight Dolby. If they would have gone up with two hands, I think Dolby would have probably won that net, but she went and attacked the ball, and it ends up working out. Dolby on the slide through the double block. Hyatt sets it over on two. Zavalny goes outside this time for Swartz over that double block down and in for the kill. Kindred back with it. Go near side. Renke takes it and pushes it right over the top. Swartz is a setup and pushed by Zavalny. Just a short touch in the middle. Timing was off, but it just kept it alive. In the center for Kindred. Hyatt will go near side for Rinky. A big swing taken and dug out by the Aggies. Outside Swartz over the top of the double block. A nice dig in the back row by Beaver, and they push it over. Zavalny net play. Hyatt near side Rinky. Syme digs it out. Dalby in the center will push it deep. Kindred will have a chance with a center set and a touch, but it doesn't matter. It's in anyway from that center spot by Taylor Keller. Back to serve, Michaela Rinke now. Another chance at it. Zavalny back set, just couldn't get it back toward the net a little bit. And the adjustment by Elena Swartz to try and get to that ball was tougher than uh, you may think. And trying to get that ball down and inside the court of play would have been just a feat in itself, trying to hit it like she did. Zavalny goes outside for Swartz over the top of the double block. Net play, Swartz trying to win it, but it ends up 
as a Brooke Hyatt little tap off the fingertips of the blocker and it comes down for a point on the near side. Kindred up by two. Renke takes it. Short set in the middle for Dalby. That's where they need to go back to. They've had some success there. Not a ton of success right now from the outside pins. Need to start looking to that middle again if you're the Aggies, I think. They go outside. Another block by Kindred. They'll push it deep now, will the Aggies. Hyatt takes it in the middle. A big swing. Sign digs it up. They keep it out of press row, and Syme will just live to see the next swing. Hyatt, near side, swung on by Erickson, and it's dug out. Here's Keller, Hyatt again for Erickson. Goes in between the blockers and the net, and it's a point for the Vikings. Some big rallies here in the middle of set number three. Kindred finds themselves the beneficiary. 13-10, Syme takes it, and it's pushed across. For a spike there from the Aggies. Simon, another dig and net play, and that has just been the case. A lot of one net plays, and Coach Curry is talking to her team. You've got to pass better. We've got to get a better pass here. It just hasn't been very good. Zavalny into the middle. Missed communication and timing between her and Dalby, and Kindred on a 3 0 run here to get up by five. Rinky, another serve. Outside, Beneta will ser serve it up for Kindred, and Dolby just misses the net play again. Kindred starting to get some momentum and go on a run here. Rinky will take it. Timeout taken by Coach Curry just to kind of stop the run. Stop the bleeding a little bit, and Kindred finds themselves up by six here. Amanda Scheffler's team looking very good after the first set. The first set that came out a little slow, I think, and some of the errors that you were seeing were maybe just not necessarily some rust, but maybe just a little bit of like, hey, we got to get back into playing a match. I know I talked to Coach Curry for the Aggies, and she said, as much as we like kind of resting up and getting ready for a match, it's time to play some volleyball. They want to play something that matters. They're ready to play a match and they're excited to get into it here today. They came out strong in that first set, but a couple of unforced errors in the second really kind of put them behind and they could never really claw back into it. And now in the third set, Kindred has the momentum. How are these Aggies going to respond? Those three seniors I talked about, they're not vocal leaders necessarily. This this team leads as a group and they, they succeed as a group and at some times they can tend to lag off as a group as well. So they're trying to keep that from happening as Coach Curry burns her second time out early here in set number three. Dalby pushes it over for the Aggies and we're back underway. Another point goes the way of the Vikings. Seven point lead. Rinky still back there serving. The Aggies just trying to claw their way out somehow. Swartz takes it. Zavolny sets up back row for Syme. Block ends up riding the net. And a nice job by Keller to get her hands on it. But it ends up riding the net and falls on the side of the Vikings for a PRFL point. Pushed over as the serve goes. It's an aggressive serve taken by Keller for the swing. Here's... Gordon took one, and then Dalby takes one off the top of the net. Nice dig in the back by Broughton, and that's got to be a little demoralizing as Kindred makes the error there, but just a little demoralizing for the Aggies. You get a, an offensive possession like that, it gets dug out, and then the net play goes right back down their throats, and they dig it out again as Kindred defense is playing pretty well, and they're passing better right now than the Aggies. That's the difference, I think, is their defensive passing so far. Passing hasn't been great for the Aggies, but they haven't gotten a whole lot of offensive opportunity to kind of show that as they get the point there, 17-13. They take a seven-point lead down to a three-point lead, or six-point lead, excuse me, down to a three-point lead. Swords to serve. The right-hander puts it over. Comes to the near side. Erickson takes it. Syme was out of position there. She thought... She thought that Michaela Rinke was going to go line on her, so she cheated a little bit toward that sideline, and Rinke saw that and threw it right down the middle. 18-13, up by five now is Kindred. 
Savolny takes it, Dolby takes a hit, and it's a double touch on the Aggies. Setter Zavalny. Jenna Zavalny, more unforced errors for the Aggies. Service comes, and Kindred, I mentioned they were having some service problems earlier in the match. They're, they're gone now for the most part. They haven't missed a serve in a while. Another point goes the way of the Vikings, 20 to 13. It's a seven point lead right now for Kindred. Coach Curry still sitting on that bench clapping and barking instructions to her team. Back set taken and just, that is an impressive hit there for Michaela Heinrich coming across her body, just putting a nice soft set over the blockers and it comes down and finds the floor on the near sideline. She was moving to her left, she hits to her right. There's Dolby with a serve. Just serve it up on a platter for her right now. She's kind of the only thing working in that middle for the Aggies. Twenty-one fourteen. Dolby to serve. She'll be in there to play defense for this point. The Kindred Vikings took advantage last time, and they give the point away anyway. Do the Aggies? Bailey Bonetta hits it right straight into the middle of the net. Twenty-two fourteen. Kindred. Hyatt serves, taken by Swartz. Zavalny back sets. It goes right on top of the net. Kept out. Nice job. Had the Aggies to kind of stay alive there. The Kindred timing was totally off. Zavalny goes over on two. Hyatt with a bump set. Just bumped right back over by Rinky. Kind of out of system for both teams. Here's an offensive chance. Taken by Benedo, but dug out by Kindred. Right into the net for Erickson, and a point goes to the way of the Aggies. They will come back to serve. Number six, Maris Miller to serve. Ball is on its way. Ends up on the line, an ace for Miller. 22-16. Maris Miller with her 25th ace of the season. Service again, goes deep this time for Renke. Now Hyatt back set, Erickson takes it from the right pole. A couple of touches and some miscommunication again between Zavalny and number 15, Gretchen Brummond. Twenty-three, sixteen. Kindred still on top. Continually extending their lead just by that much more. And now it's set point. Kindred trying to take a two set to one lead. Twenty-four, sixteen. The senior, Madison Erickson, to serve. Taken by the Aggies. Zavalny outside. Hit right into the net by Gordon. And Kindred takes home set number two in this quarterfinal matchup. 25-16. The Vikings continue their run with their momentum. We'll see if they can carry it into set number four. We're back after this here at the Fargo Dome. You're watching the NFHS Network. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. John Lee with you here on the NFHS Network. We want to let you know that you are watching the coverage of the 2016 North Dakota High School Activities Association Class B State Volleyball Tournament right here on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash NDHSAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of the NDHSA championship action. From live games to full replays, we even have highlights. It's all there at nfhsnetwork.com slash ndhsaa. Today's game is also available for our mobile subscribers via our mobile website. You can log on to nfhsnetwork.com from your smartphone or tablet, and you can view live games and replays from, NF from anywhere. nfhsnetwork.com. High school happens here. Kindred looking really good heading into set number four. Getting progressively better as the match goes on, and Coach Amanda Scheffler calls her team back into a huddle as the Aggies are taking their time, taking all the time they can. Coach Curry, she's done this before. I mean, she's in her eighth year here at Park River, and she knows that she has this time to kind of talk to her team. She's kind of in there laying into her. She has the seniors all nodding their head in agreement. They understand what's going on in the huddle. Now we'll see if they can execute it as they come back out on the floor here for set number four. Kindred, they're looking really good, and a lot of 
mistakes that they were making early in the first set and then a little bit in the second set really shored up in that third set. Not as many service errors, not as many hitting errors. The blocking was better. Defensively, they passed better as well. Whereas the Aggies, a lot of unforced errors. They're having some problems passing the ball effectively, and then their offensive chances just, they just can't get much going at all. Dalby really the only one having a good offensive day, I would say, and she's even struggling a little bit in some of the sections. Swartz takes a swing. The pass is into the net, but Kindred somehow keeps it alive. Dalby will take it from the center. Pushed out, Erickson with a little slide hit off the top of the net. That's a difficult play for the Aggies, and we have just back and forth net play, and anytime that type of thing happens, you always look at the height column for some of the middle blockers for these two teams. In that situation, Taylor Dalby, six foot, just has a better chance at a ball that ends up on top of the net like that. Just long on that hit from Kindred. Two nothing Park River. This one may go to five sets. Park River looks a little rejuvenated after the talking between sets there from Coach Curry. We'll see if that translates to more than just the first two points. Erickson over the double block. In on the far, on the cross court hit. Comes to the near sideline and ends up painting the line. Substitute coming in, number 10. We get to see Michaela Heinrich back into the front row. As Taylor Keller goes to the back, she serves. Syme from the back row right into the net and then giving Kindred their second point and tying it up at two here in set number four. Taken. It's near side, Beneta. Pushes it over, Hyatt into the middle, punched across just too far there by Heinrich. I think that ball got on her a little quicker than she wanted it to. She was expecting something a little, uh, a little slower of pace, and that, that ball got to her really quickly, so she kind of had to flail to hit it. Hyatt goes outside. Erickson blocked away by Dalby. Taylor Dalby with another block on the top. And she'll continue. She's got more than 50 blocks on the season. Plays really well in that center. Service from Swartz in for an ace. Elena Swartz with her 40th ace of the season. 5-2 Park River. Went on a bit of a run here, and then they give it right back to the Vikings. It's tough to build some momentum when you're when you're having some of those service error problems. We talk, I mean, there are many teams in this term, and I talked about it if you were with us earlier in the day. A lot of teams here have a chance to make a run at a title if they can serve well and consistently. We talked to Coach Laurie Good about it in the Lamore matchup. We talked to Coach Rich Olson in the Langdon matchup. He said serving is key. They have to keep their serves in and continue to serve aggressively if they want to have success at this tournament. And both of these teams, you're seeing it here. They're struggling in certain aspects of the game. Serve and serve receive are two of the pivotal points why Kindred had taken that set in set three. And then again, why Kindred is hanging around here in set number four. Park River is, is playing better than Kindred in this fourth set. But Kindred is within three still because of a couple service errors by the Aggies. And there's one on the back line for Kindred. They paint the line for a nice little point to get the serve back. 6-4, Park River. Still on top. On top of the net, taking just a big swing, and it ends up as a kill for Gretchen Brumman. Aggies back, service will come. Kindred goes short in the middle again, right down the throat of the defense. Michaela Heinrich, she's had some good swings from that center of the floor. Heinrich passing, or I should say coming up on 100 kills on the season. 
Official stats may have her as that being her 100th kill. My count, she has four, so she's at 99. Official stats again taken by the people at the stats table, and then we find out after the game. I keep, as best I can anyway, keep the own stats to try to keep you updated with how many kills somebody has in a match. Of course, that's always subject to tame. You can check out the statistics uh, on the metrotournament.com slash 2016 state volleyball. They have uh, stats after every match uploaded there, and that's where we've been getting our information uh, between matches. The Aggies take a 9-5 lead. Set up outside for Rinky. Dug out by Syme. That's a beautiful dig from the Libero, and it turns in to a touch over. Kindred out of system, can't keep up, and the Aggies take the point. The whole bench doing the same hand motion to show what had to change on that for the Kindred Viking player at front. I didn't see who it was. In the middle, taking a nice little touch is Keller. Here's Dalby, no, check that. Brummond from the right pin. It's a kill for the Aggies and the Vikings now take a timeout. 11 to five, Park River on top here in set number four. This one might be going to five. You're watching the North Dakota High School Activities Association's coverage of the 2016 State Volleyball Tournament for Class B in the state of North Dakota. The Vikings come out very quickly out of the huddle. Coach didn't really have much to say. Amanda Shuffler just really quickly said, here's what we got to do, and they send her players back out onto the floor. Coach Curry, on the other hand, she's been using every second she has with her team and with her players during the timeouts, during the breaks, during the so sections between sets. She's been honestly slowing this game down a little bit, putting taking a little bit of the air out of the Kindred crowd. She's also taking away a little bit of momentum by having sort of a longer conversation with her players. The, the fan bases both have traveled well, but obviously Kindred being much closer to Fargo, they've got a good amount of students here. Blocked and not able to keep it over the net was Swartz, it's a point for Kindred, number four, Laura, Laura Beaver. Just out of bounds there. So the Kindred Vikings keep the service. And two quick points coming out of the timeout, 11-7. Kindred only about 27 miles away from Fargo here. Uh, Park River, on the other hand, about 135 miles. So the, the teams traveled quite a bit further, but uh, a good following here for Park River on the far sideline. Just out of bounds, another service error for Park River. They just get the point back, and then they end up giving it right back. 20 or 12 to 8, I should say, here in set number 4. Dalby in the top. Zavalny pushes it deep into the corner. Erickson takes a swing right into the double blockers, and we've got an illegal hit on Michaela Rinke, the senior, and she's not very happy with herself about that as she puts her head down and walks back to her starting position. 13-8, Aggies up by five. They've kept this margin for a little bit now. Long spike across the... Uh, Across the way, here's Syme from the back row, just pushes it right over. Up on top of the net was the Vikings, and there's Beneta back from the far sideline. Dolby now takes it and way out of bounds on the far sideline. Vikings excited about that one. Here's a substitute coming for the Kindred Vikings. Number 10, Michaela Heinrich back into the match to play that front row as you get to see Taylor Keller go to the back. Center set for Heinrich. There's some success there. Vikings have had success on that. And by my count, that would be her 100th kill of the season for Michaela Heinrich. Zavalny takes it and Dalby stuffs it right down the throat. They come right back with a middle set. And I think both teams 
have figured out that's that's where your success lies right now. The only real good offensive possessions you're getting and the good offensive progression you're getting is from the middle blocker position. Right now the pins, they're not as aggressive and not working as well from the pins as they are from that center spot. Hyatt goes outside for Erickson. Syme digs it up and there's a big reason why the defensive players are digging out pretty much everything from the pins, but they're having struggles with the middle positions. Zavalny into the middle. That's a tough one to get to for Dalby, and it's four hits on the Aggies. Again, the winner of this match, Park River or Kindred. Kindred leads it two sets to one right now. The winner will play our Redeemers, the number one team in the state by record and seeding. They were ranked number one. For the majority of the year, they came in, they, they beat pretty much everybody in their path to a 40 and two record. The winner of this will play our Redeemers. The loser will play Ray in the consolation bracket tomorrow at noon. The winner's game will be at 8 p.m. today, tomorrow in the Fargo Dome. Both will be on the NFHS Network at nfhsnetwork.com slash NBHSAA. And there's another point for the Vikings and they claw back into this set within two now. Kindred, Brooke Hyatt will serve. She takes the serve, nice soft one right over. Don't make any errors, just serve smart, not too aggressive to where you'll give away some points. And then Erickson hits it right into the net. Dolby to serve the Aggies service and then Reinke has to kind of one hand it around a couple kindred players as the second hit 16-12 back out to a four point lead now for Park River back set to the right pin for Erickson just a tip over Swartz a couple of players tangled up for the Aggies they just push it over and live to see the next swing Erickson again from this right pole off the blockers Zavalny goes with two, comes up for Brummond, and then pushed by Erickson. Zavalny again. This time it was in there for Gordon, and it went off the net and down. Kindred hanging on, and the Aggies is not quite able to put them away here in set number four. Service will come from Erickson. And a tough touch there for the Aggies on the serve from Erickson. We'll turn it into a 16-14 set number four. Service from the Vikings comes over. Zavalny pushes it outside. And a nice little job by the senior Bailey Bonetta. Kicking it over the blockers and down and in for the point. Now the Aggies back with the serve, up by three. And service ace there for the Aggies. No chance, it's tough to receive it when Maris Miller puts it in there like that. 26 aces on the year for Miller and a timeout called by Kindred, the second of the match, or second of the set, excuse me, 18-14, the Aggies lead by four here at the northeast corner of the Fargo Dome. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with the rest of your set number four right after this. Olive Garden delivers the final moments. Bring home Italian favorites and they'll cheer for you on game day. Olive Garden is the official dining room of high school sports and with the new catering delivery service, you never have to miss a moment. Back inside the Fargo Dome. Kindred, again, back out on the floor, ready to roll. Coach Curry using all of her minute that she can with her team to maybe slow down the fans, slow down the momentum a little bit. And honestly, it's been working. Coming out of the timeout so far, the Aggies, I think, have been the better team for the first couple points before Kindred can get back some, some rhythm and momentum. Outside for Rinky, she tips it over the two blockers. And the Aggies recover and push it over Hyatt in the middle, trying to go again for Heinrich, and then Kindred. 
A beautiful job there, 18-15. And the substitute for Kindred back to serve will be Victoria Broughton. Syme takes it. Dalby with a swing. Check that, Brummond. Brummond took the swing on that. Out of bounds, Kindred with another error. Pushes Park River closer to that set win. 19-15. They've kept about the four or five point margin for a while. It's been a, runs two or three to one side, two or three to the other, but the average has been about four to five points. They've kept that since pretty early in this set, and Park River has looked pretty good especially in net play like that. Dalby up on there, but the winner there was Swartz. She's able to kick it home. 20 to 15, five points away from a set five. Set up in the middle, swung on by Keller, taken by the Aggies. No problem there. Zavolny comes to the near side for Swartz. It's into the net. They're going to call it a block. And they keep rolling, and in and down on the end line by Beaver. One of the juniors on this squad. Kindred takes the serve, 20 to 16. Park River still on top, dug out by the Vikings. Renke from the far side. She just really hasn't taken a swing in quite a while, they're just tipping it over on that right, or on that left side rather. Here's a swing from her, blocked off by Zavalny. It's nice to have a setter that can really reach like that. Zavalny keeps it alive. Checked in the middle for a short set. Sign can't take that one. 20 to 17, Kindred climbing back into it. Timeout, Coach Curry. She uses one finally as Kindred claws back within three. Coach Curry says, hang on. Let's take a break. Let's pump these fans down a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back again with the rest of your set four right after this. This game is brought to you by Under Armour, maker of the world's best apparel, footwear, and accessories. Check out the full line of performance gear now at UA.com. Under Armour, I will. Back here at the Fargo Dome, NFHS Network coverage of the 2016 Class B State Volleyball Tournament of North Dakota. And thank you for being with us. John Lee here with you for all the Class B action this weekend. Quarterfinals today. This is our final game of the night. Winner of this goes on to take on the number one overall seed in our Redeemers, but they've got a lot of work to do yet as it's 20 to 17. Make it 20 to 18 after the senior Rinky comes out of the timeout with a kill. Kindred pulls within two. This just has set five written all over it, folks. Laura Beaver, service, Syme takes it. Zavalny at the top of the net, tried to push it over, but it's taken, now Kindred will have a possession. Hyatt, far side for Rinky, Syme digs it out. Now Zavalny, near side, Swartz with a very quick fire, and she's just gonna miss the back end line. Twenty to nineteen, Kindred has climbed their way back within one. Service, a tough serve, and it ends up as a tie set four. Twenty apiece. Laura Beaver, the junior, back to serve one more time. Four straight points here for Kindred. Set up. Grumman pushes it across. Hyatt now goes outside for Rinky. She just a long looping hit. Forces the Aggies to back off the net and they'll bump it over. Kindred now with a free possession. They go in the middle. Pushed up in on the back line by Taylor Keller and the Kindred Vikings have the lead in the fourth set. They've rattled off five in a row and Coach Curry takes another time out here to talk to her Aggies team. A great chance and a great opportunity for Kinder. They come right back out on the floor after an Aggies timeout. 
They had all the momentum and they kept it through the timeout and come back four straight points to put, or five straight points to put them up by one here in set number four. It's two sets to one right now. The Kindred Vikings trying to be the first team to upset anybody here at this state tournament. Right now we're all chalk. The one, two, and three seeds all won earlier today in 3-0 sweep victories over the bottom three that were random drawn. Park River and Kindred are four and five respectively. This would be the five over four matchup that we'd get to see an upset. Not much of an upset. These two teams very evenly matched and we knew that coming in. We knew this was gonna be the match, the highlight of the night, sort of the, the closest one of the day. Or a Beaver, another serve taken by Brumman. Zavalny goes near side to Swartz over the two blockers. Hyatt goes in the middle. They'll try it right again to Taylor Keller. She can't do anything with it. Brumman with a big swing off the block. Kept alive by the Aggies. Swartz into the net. Another block by the Vikings. Taken and sent over by Maris Miller. Rinky from the far side. Syme will set up near side for Swartz over the two blockers. And a good rally here. Back and forth. They're going to continue going. Kindred will continue going to Taylor Keller as long as she's in that front row. 22-20, Vikings on top. Beaver, another serve, six straight points. Syme keeps it alive, Can Park River keeps it. They're still in this point. Set right away to Keller, again with another point from the middle spot. These short sets on the middle right slot are killing the Park River for Bill Lankin Aggies right now. 23-20. Eight straight points for Beaver. She'll serve for the ninth. Syme digs it up. Zavalny pushed over by Swartz. Another two Renke on the outside blocked off by Dalby. Check that, Zavalny. Zavalny was the one who blocked that off. Dolby comes back into the front row, and the Aggies, I think, are pretty happy about that. They're going to have some combatant against that short set in the middle. Uh, as much as Brummond is there, she's not six foot. Rinky in the middle over the two blockers. Dolby pushes. Rinky digs it up. Hyatt goes deep, way out of bounds. Kindred. Gives up a couple points, it's 23-22. Park River still got some work to do. Trying to stay in and keep their state title hopes alive here. Again, the loser of this game will go into the consolation bracket. The winner will play the number one overall seed tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Hyatt back to the outside for Rinky. Syme. Wartz pushes it over, and then you have Rinky pushing it over the double block. Zavalny into the middle for Dolby, takes a swing at it. Erickson, a nice dig in the back row. Hyatt just pushes it over. Dolby with a tip on the top. Vikings keep it alive and live to see another possession. Here's Zavalny over on two. There's a benefit of having a tall setter, but Kindred doesn't care. Match point, Kindred Vikings. Dolby with a swing, blocked off. Dolby will push. Erickson, blocked away. The Aggies stay alive, 24-23, Kindred. Still match point. Erickson, just a soft tap. Syme will take it. Dolby in the middle, off the top of the blocker. They'll go again to Erickson on the far side. There it is! The fear continues. They face everything and rise, and Kindred is headed to take on the number one seed tomorrow night. Five upsets, four here in the final corner final of the night. Park River will fall to Kindred High School by set scores of 21-25, 25-17, 25-16, and 25-23. Three sets to one, Park River, Fordville, Lincoln played a great match, but Kindred right now is on an emotional run. 
that maybe puts them as a hottest team in the state right now. They are impressive. They've won their seventh in a row here, and they come back with a 3-1 victory. They've won their last four matches 3-1 here at the state tournament. They're 1-0 in 2016. Three sets to one, Kindred takes it. Set score is 21-25, 25-17, 25-16, 25-23. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back, do some analysis, and preview tomorrow's matchups right here on the NFHS Network. This game is brought to you by Under Armour, maker of the world's best apparel, footwear, and accessories. Check out the full line of performance gear now at UA.com. Under Armour, I will. Welcome back inside the Fargo Dome on the Northeast Court here at the 2016 Class B State Volleyball Championships. A long day of volleyball, four good games. We got to see four good matches uh, as well. And the final one going into the fourth set, Kindred takes home set number four, 25-23, and they get it three sets to one over Park River for Bill Lankin. The Aggies fall as the four seed. The Kindred Vikings upset them five over four. They've won their last seven in a row now, and Kindred will head into tomorrow. They will play the number one overall seed, our Redeemers Knights from Minot, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And the Kindred fans will show out. They already did here today, as it's only, like I said, about 30-some miles from Kindred up to the Fargo Dome here. A great day of volleyball. We'll run you through it here in just a second. Langdon area, Edmore, Munich. The Cardinals took down the Wildcats of Center Stanton High School, 25-10, 25-9, 25-14. It was a quick 3-0 sweep. In the two versus, uh, or in the number two matchup, the first match of the day at noon. Langdon goes on to play Lamore, who beat Hayes in high school 25 12, 25 16, 25 19 earlier in the day. Langdon and Lamore play at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Center Stanton Wildcats and the Hayes and Bison will play at noon tomorrow. Both those games and both those matches will be here on the NFHS Network and NFHSnetwork.com. 2 p.m. tomorrow in the Fargo Dome, we get to see the Ray Jays, who lost to our Redeemers High School, 25 to 11, 25 10, and 25 12. Redeemers will play at 8 p.m. tomorrow in the Fargo Dome against this Kindred squad, who just won three sets to one by set scores of 21 25, 25 17, 25 16, and 25 23 over Kin or over Park River for Bill Lincoln. Park River will play Ray tomorrow at 2 p.m. And again at 8 p.m., our Redeemers will play Kindred here on this floor. I want to thank you for tuning in. For our cameraman, Jake Cheetah and Daniel Munoz, I'm John Lee. You've been watching live coverage of the North Dakota High School Activities Association 2016 Class B State Volleyball Tournament on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash NDHSAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of NDHSAA at championship action. From live games to full game replays, highlights, it's all there 